very good evening and welcome to Biz First in Focus. Starting off with the introduction, of course, of our guest for this evening. He's Dr. Suranga Silva, the Secretary General of Tourism and Hospitality Education and Research Association. He's also the coordinator of Masters in Tourism Economics and Hotel Management at the University of Colombo. A very good evening, Dr. Yeah, yeah, and welcome yeah, to yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, doctor, last year is arguably one of our best years in the tourism industry. Uh, we achieved a goal of 4.4 billion US dollars in tourism income. Of, of also, Sri Lanka was named as the, uh, the go-to destination uh, by Lonely Planet. Colombo, at the start of this year, uh, was named as the must-photograph sites uh, in uh, Southeast Columbus. Asia. Uh, so these are some massive achievements. What actually enabled our country uh, to pass these historic milestones? Actually, now we must be happy being Sri Lankans because we are being recognized as the number one destination to visit 2019, and we reach uh, four billion US dollars right now. So uh, it's a very good achievement, but uh, we have to think about whether we have reached the potential or we are below the potential. How far we are below the potential must be addressed. But we being Sri Lankan must be so happy being recognized Sri Lanka as a number one destination by Lonely Planet. At the same time, we reach four billion US dollars. That would be a great achievement. According to your perspective, <coughs> Doctor, how much is our potential? Yeah, potential actually very much high. Actually, Sri Lanka. When you look at Sri Lankan economy, we have to think about how what is the possible contribution of Sri Lanka to some for Sri Lankan economy development from the Sri Lankan people and the yeah. Sri Lankan government. Yes. So basically. When you look at the other two industries, especially other, other industries, manufacturing sector, agriculture sector, we are actually relatively less compared to, to generate the foreign exchange. But when you look at the tourism industry, we have enormous potentials. Hmm. Example, uh, we are not being confined to the low-end customers, tourists are able to. We can actually achieve the high-end customer. Now, now, when you look at the other destinations, those who are promoting tourism for high-end customers and making a lot of money, when you look at the other countries, like uh, especially Maldives and Singapore and other countries, we have the great potential because we've been located in the right place. We've been recognized as the, one of the most diversified attractions mm -hmm. and the friendly people and the uh, peaceful country. When you look at our country, one of the most peaceful country and the uh, Sri Lankan cuisine and all other attractions when you look at, Sri Lanka should not be like this. We have to reach more than this amount. But we've been Sri Lankan, achievement of this type of uh, milestone actually we must be happy of course we must be happy with uh, what we have achieved but of course we must look at ways to improve ourselves now you said Sri Lanka is uh, one of the most peaceful countries in the region but of course uh, in the international arena this is not the picture that is going out in the recent past we saw uh, during uh, the political crisis in the country we saw certain <coughs> countries issuing travel advisories against our country also but the, the on the flip side of it when uh, the Yellow West started protesting in France against their fuel prices, they were actually being very violent. The situation in Sri Lanka, although uh, tensions were seen inside parliament, we saw parliamentarians fighting with each other and all that, people in the country, the general public of the country, remained highly civilized during yes, this yes. period. But of course, international headlines read uh, bloodbath in Sri Lanka, yes. political turmoil, political crisis, uh, and you know things that would scare uh, potential tourists who are coming into our country. Why is this being, why is this picture of Sri Lanka being painted in the Actually, international Actually, this arena? dilemma must be addressed by ourselves. Now, example, I, when I noticed yesterday news, actually, France, hmm. there were more than 10 people were killed, actually, right? During their protests, yes, there were yes. many people who were yes. killed and there were, there were massive losses to yes. public property. Yes, yes. But unfortunately, the, the Western media is actually putting always the negative side for us. But when you look at Sri Lankan, even though we have a t political crisis, people are very silent. They haven't have any 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 issues on that particular political crisis. Exactly, they, they are very silent. At the destination site, everywhere we can see the very peace peaceful environment. But mm -hmm. Western countries said there will be a bloodbath. That is a very dangerous. That is very unfortunate situation. We've been a developing countries in South Asia. But given all of this. Our country managed to achieve 4.4 billion US dollars. That was our target and we achieved it. We actually surpassed it. Uh, do you think that we could have done better given yeah, the situation that was during have, the end we, of the year? We could have done better definitely. If we say, okay, this is our maximum, I don't agree with them, being economics. 
but we could have done much more better. But at the same time, when you look at the 4 billion, we have to be very careful this number. Why? Because are we going to remain this 4 billion with Sri Lanka or what is, what is the value addition for the country? Hmm. How that income generated for tourism income industry is equally distributed or hmm. fairly distributed. I am not talking the equally distributed, the fair, fair trade. Hmm. So those are the questions we have to ask. But forgetting about those areas, we have to try to get more foreign exchange earning. Like now, uh, now our country is having a very severe situation when you look at the foreign reserves. Foreign reserves, depreciation of the currency is now happening very fast. Hmm. Therefore, when you look at the tourism industry, this is the number one industry. We can assure more foreign exchange earning to Sri Lanka. Therefore, we could have reached much more than this, but we must be happy. Because now, there was talk when the rupee is depreciating that exporters are being uh, benefited by the depreciation of the rupee. They, there were some people who said that tourism also, uh, tourists are more likely to come to Sri Lanka because the rupee is depreciated. They can, they can buy more things. So, Sri Lanka is more at the top of their list. Uh, but is this true? No, actually, the depreciation would definitely make a significant effect for tourism over Sri Lanka. Hmm. But you know, there is, a, there is a concept called, okay, even though they get the high rupees, now a larger number of tourists, then they have to find, they have to use that rupees into product or services. Mm. That is, we call the, uh, we call that type of situation, actually tourists would realize that Sri Lanka inflation is very high, though they get the Sri Lanka rupees. Mm. So that is, we call uh, money illusions. Mm. The money illusion concept is, you have been given high salaries or high exchange rates to, in term of, when we look at the terms of Sri Lanka rupees, but tourists will be able to get only little amount of service or product. Therefore, in general, depreciation of currency would have a certain positive impact on tourists of Sri Lanka. Now, when I was in, in India last week, there are several tourists told me, okay, Indian told me, okay, we would like to come to Sri Lanka because we have more rupees from our rupees. Hmm. But at the same time, they have, they must have recognized later, realized later. When they came to Sri Lanka. Yeah, came to, they, they have more rupees, Sri Lanka rupees. But we, we have to find out whether they get the more product or service out of that rupees. The value for money, value for rupees. Therefore, there are both sides actually now. Depreciation of currency would encourage the tourists to come to Sri Lanka, especially from the, some countries. But it is not guaranteed, it is not say that okay, they would be happy because the cost of production of cost, the price of the tourist services or product would be much more high example now. When you come to Sri Lanka, we are the airport, we have in the airport charging highest than fifty dollars per tourist, right? At yeah. the same time, when you go to the hotel, the Sri Lankan hotels actually, when you look at relatively expensive. When you go to Malaysia, when you go to Thailand, we can have a lesser price than Sri Lankan market, right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, when you visit the site, uh, it is relatively expensive. For tourists. Yeah, for tourists. And also Colombo was named as one of the most expensive cities to live yes, in. Yes, yes. In yeah. Southeast Asia. So therefore, uh, we have to follow the Malaysian or Thailand model. They are charging less price for tourists for the hotel accommodations, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they are charging for other activities. Higher prices. Higher price, no, lot of other activities, not one or single activities. They are making more activities and experience sharing activities for tourists, then they are paying little, little money, but accumulation of the money Is would be much high. more higher than the, what we are charging from the only for hotel or other city. Very, very, uh, very few activities we are promoting for tourists. Therefore, my suggestion is, we let them to come to tourists to come to Sri Lanka at low price, co fact, co product, hmm. hotel and airfare. Hmm. But when you, when they are using Sri Lanka as a destination site, there are a lot of involvement they will be having. So that involvement and activities must be enhanced to make more experience for them. So experience will make happy tourists. That, may can, that can create more income to Sri Lanka rather than the focus on one or two activities and one or two services. So it's a, it's a win-win situation <coughs> both yes. for our country and for the tourists that visit our country as well. Yes, definitely, yes. That is a very valid suggestion. Thank you very much, Doctor. We will cross over to a short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Biz First in Focus. Welcome back. You're watching Biz First in Focus. So we're in discussion with an expert in the tourism industry, of course, Dr. Suranga Silva. Doctor, getting back to our discussion, you said that uh, it's your belief 
that uh, the core prices of, of the core facilities that tourists require in Sri Lanka, the prices should be reduced. Now, one of the main problems that uh, the hotel industry in this country has is high taxes on tourists. The, the taxation for, uh, for accommodation for tourists is about 30 percent. Now, a massive chunk of this is being, uh, is being taken or is being accrued from the tourists that come. Wouldn't it be wiser if the government focuses on a more on taxing the revenue of the hotel instead of uh, putting this tax burden on the tourists themselves? Of course, this would uh, result in a reduction in accommodation costs for tourists. Yeah, there are two arguments actually. One thing is okay. We're, during the wartime period, mm. we have given some subsidies for the hotel industry. Okay. Example, electricity, water, mm. and some tax exemptions. Relief, yes, but there was an argument that. When we have given the subsidies for the hotel industry, they didn't give it to the tourists. They, they, they will give it to the tourists, but ultimately the, re the relief, the subsidies must be paid by the people. Because taxes. Oh, taxpayers' rupees. Yes, because electricity bill is 100 rupees, but we are going to give them 80 rupees. But that 20 rupees must be paid by the people, those who have not come to the country, those who have not come to the hotel, those who have not seen even hotel. That happened in during the war time period. Okay. Because that time we need to protect the tourism hotel industry, therefore we have given certain subsidies. Okay. At that time tourists were actually overjoyed, those who are coming, because they got the very low price but good quality services of hotels. Hmm. But today we want to make the hotel industry more competitive, which should not be a burden for the nations. True. But if government is putting the unnecessary taxes, expecting that this is the industry is growing, Therefore, we have to squeeze the, squeeze, squeeze the money. Uh -huh. That is also dangerous because growing industry should be given more opportunity to grow it. Hmm. So now that is why Sri Lanka to a hotel industry, especially they have been taxed around 30 percent of big amount. That is actually when we look at the regional comparison, it is too much high. Too high. Too high. So they are in comparison with other countries. Other right? countries. When actually we have analyzed that one, especially India, it is very less. Uh, How tax. much is the tax around? Which rate is it? In actually, India? it is around uh, uh, average is a region is around eighteen percent. Around eighteen. Eighteen twenty percent. So this is close to twice or yeah, one point five percent. Yes, actually, some countries actually it is less than eighteen percent. Okay. But what I won't tell you now, not only taxes on the hotel, right? When you look at the airport, hmm. it is also very high tax, fifty dollars per tourist, right? Okay. When you go to the cultural triangle, it mm. is around thirty dollars per tourist. So when you look at all the taxes, there will be a multiple of multiple taxes on tax on tax. Mm. So therefore, not only that one, some some other activities we have, we actually put taxes. That good actually if if it is making more encouragement for the tourism industry. My opinion is okay. We will have a less tax mm. and make more business, and mm. on the business. We are getting more profit, hmm. more revenue. Therefore, less tax percentage. Number of tourists are increasing high. At the same time, activities are growing. So, with the increased number with of activities, total of course, tax income is much more higher than higher tax rate. You can you can also increase the number of job opportunities job that opportunity, people in yes. this country have. And when they are having job, okay, they have to pay taxes from the government. Therefore, total rather than increasing the huge tax, they can actually having the less tax, more tourists available, more job opportunities, more income. There will be a direct, indirect, and induced uh, tax income to the government. But one question: Is there really a, a huge development in the hotel industry here in Sri Lanka? Yes, definitely. Now, last from 2019 up to now, we can see the huge infrastructure development. Hmm. The whole big change happening now in Sri Lanka. But there will be a housing bubble. Actually, now example: If tourists are not coming to Sri Lanka as we expected, the large number of hotels how they are going to operate? Now, example per one five star hotel rooms, actually, mm. the investor must spend more than four to five billions, millions, millions of rupees. rupees my four to five millions of rupees. Then, how we can he or she can uh, get that money payback period? Payback mm. period. He or she has to pay, uh, actually charge uh, more than two hundred fifty US dollars. So, if you want to take it eight years time, right? Mm. Eight years time is average. Uh, the uh, reasonable. Uh, time for the investment, right? Mm. Maximum ten years, but therefore there is actually the uh, dilemma. Actually, whether we can, whether we should increase the price of the hotel by giving the sub uh, uh, protection by the government mm. to make them happy, or whether we are going to reduce the price by reducing the taxes and make more business to Sri Lanka. Example now, Singapore, not Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia. Mm. 
Vietnam. Hmm. Those countries, when you visit, you can have a good hotel at a lower price, hmm. right? But today, that is why many tourists are now diverting from our country or other countries. I want to tell you that this has to have a national level uh, holistic integrated tax policy for tourism industry because tourism industry is the most viable industry and vibrant industry to make our country much more better situation. But let's speak about the focus that is given to the tourism industry. Now we saw we, in the recent, uh, I mean currently ongoing uh, issue in the, in the agricultural industry is the infestation of the Sena caterpillar. We, there's massive discussions about this. There is, there is talks of compensation being paid to farmers. So there is a lot of focus on the agricultural industry. Then when you take the tea industry, the export industry, we always discuss about these industries and uh, the government is always willing to provide subsidies to these industries and encourage them. Well, how is the focus of the government towards the tourism industry? Actually, the agriculture is actually the backbone of our economy, right? Hmm. Whatever happens, okay, if you cannot protect the agriculture sector, that there is no sustainability of the for the country. For the country. Therefore, we have to protect it. Okay. Even some countries, they are actually not having the profit, not having the re revenue, but they are making the problem. They are protecting the agriculture sector. Hmm. Therefore, there is no doubt, no question about the protecting the agriculture sector because that is more community driven and the more fairly distributed income. Hmm. So, therefore, that has to be protected. But at the same time, if you really want to make a uh, big push for Sri Lankan economy, especially through the industrial development, we, uh, we should not forget about tourism industry. Because when you look at the other industries, especially for your only in foreign, foreign exchange earning, but uh, you look at the uh, agriculture sector, we have no competitive advantage or competitive advantage to export our agricultural product. At the same time, industrial product, now we have remained in service sector, especially mm. towards the industry. Therefore, if you really want to see the current depreciation, of, uh, the crisis, mm. towards the industry must be one of the most important industry to generate foreign exchange to the nation. Of course, and uh, last year we managed to hit our target of 4.4 billion rupees. Will we be able to surpass that target and to do better this time around? We will continue this discussion after a short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Biz First in Focus. Welcome back to Biz First in Focus. If you're joining us just now, we are continuing our discussion uh, with Dr. Suranga Silva. He's an expert, of course, in the tourism industry. Uh, Dr. Suranga, this is the final few minutes of the show. Uh, we spoke a lot about the tourism industry, the shortcomings of the industry, and we also uh, appreciated and commended the achievement of this industry during the past year. 4.4 billion, we hit our target in 2018. 2019, of course, the aim of everybody who are employed in the sector, who, who are stakeholders in the sector, uh, is the development of this, to go beyond this. And I believe our target is uh, some 7.5 7 billion. billion by 2022. Yes. We have only three years left. Uh, it's close to double the current figure. Uh, so how do we get about this? And what are the priorities that you uh, in the tourism industry uh, are expecting to address when we are trying to increase our tourism income? Actually, tourism industry cannot be isolated as a separate industry. Look at now, tourism industry has a very huge backward and forward linkages. Hmm. And it has a direct, indirect, and induced effect. Hmm. So therefore, all we take into consideration tourism industry must be integrated industry with the other industries. Hmm. Example, assuming that uh, next year we are going to have uh, 4 million tourists. Hmm. So how many eggs do you want? How many? Eggs we want. Okay. Produced in Sri Lanka. Hmm. So average, how many days tourists are staying in Sri Lanka? Hmm. And per day, how many eggs they are using? Yes. And multiply by the number of tourists. Yes. So are we, our, whether, I would like to know whether our aggregate is ready for it? Hmm. That issue we have discussed. So we, if four million tourists come, if they are going to stay seven, ten days average, mm. and if they are using two eggs per day, mm. how many eggs do you want? So we easily we can calculate. Mm. But our that is why I'm telling that tourism industry must be integrated with the other industries, service industry, at the same time uh, agriculture industry, transport industry, transport industry, at the same the apparel industry. Uh, that is why we can create the new activities based on industry. My example. When you when we if we can combine tourism industry with the agriculture, we call agro tourism. Mm. When we can introduce our tourism with the our culture, we call culture tourism or religious tourism or spiritual tourism or wellness tourism. 
because you know that the world is now the senior citizens are growing very fast. Mm. If you are to looking at the proact if you want to proactive with the future trend of tourism development in the world, we are to be mm, we are destination which can provide more hospitality. Mm. So many people would like to come to Sri Lanka for the hospitality. Okay. So that is why I'm telling you we have a lot of challenges. And now. already, already the senior, the the, the number of uh, the tourists who are coming to our country, we see a lot of uh, senior tourists yes. in our country. That yes. is the current trend as well. Yes, in future definitely. This the is world, going to increase. More world, the significant proportion of the world population is senior citizens. Okay. So therefore, we have to divert our tourism industry on that particular area. So, even though we are developing with a very luxurious hotel, one thing we have to guarantee that hospitality. Therefore, the manpower development is very important. Hmm. So, right manpower, right quality and manpower with the right attitude. The quality of the service that they are yes, providing. Yes, they must have a service attitude. Hmm. But in Thailand is happening right now, they have a very service attitude. But in Sri Lanka, we are developing manpower. But unfortunately, attitude is challenging right now. Attitude, whether the people, those who are servicing in the tourism industry have a, the right attitude is a very questionable. That is why we have to think about how tourists are coming, why tourists are coming, what purpose they are coming. We have to do a research. Hmm. But now, the research is very important. All, world in the wor all around the world, the whole industry, they are focusing on research. Hmm. They cannot take any in addition, uh, rule of thumb without having the research. So, we would like to know another 10 years time, whatever tourists would come to Sri Lanka. What kind of situation would be? Yeah, like? whatever services we have to provide them. For example, Chinese tourists are coming, Indian tourists are coming, another 2 years time, whatever tourists come. Because we have to look at the holistic approach, international level and national level. Because this is not going to be the situation forever? No, definitely I have to tell you, new another 3 years time. The hospitality is the most important factor for tourist attraction, not the building. Green environment, richer are seeking the greener environment, greener product, wealthier are seeking the healthier product. So, the senior citizens are seeking the more hospital, hospitality services. Those three are very important. So, we have to focus on our tourism, Sri Lanka tourism, greener product, healthier product and more hospitality driven product. So, for that one, human resource development is very, very important. So, of course, these are all results of research that have been conducted into the tourism industry. How is the research sector in the tourism industry like here in Sri Lanka? Actually, in our Sri Lanka, actually, we be in the University of Colombo, we actually have the master program. Each students are doing the master thesis. Hmm. I have asked them to, okay, your master's thesis should not be in some way kept. Hmm. You have to apply what you have found. Therefore, we have a very industry interactive and application oriented research study program. That is why we are organizing tourism leaders summit for every year. Especially we are organizing now during the October, first hmm. week of the October. We are telling our students, if you can't make a research study which ca cannot be applied for this industry, you should not do it. Hmm. Why? Because we have been blamed by the industry. You are actually academic, your, your contribution is very insignificant for the professional and application, uh, application for the development yes, of the industry. Yes, that is why I am telling always my students must do the research which that research must be applicable for the industry. That is why we call industry interactive application oriented study program. But there is of course a situation here in Sri Lanka where university education is is in reality not being applied. Uh, there are certain instances where you know graduates from an agricultural sector will seek employment in, in, in an accounting sector or something like that. They are not applying what they learned. There are, there are <coughs> countless number of graduates protesting day in and day out on the streets, uh, demanding for government jobs. Uh, but that is not the reality actually. Now you, if, if you look at the road, number of students in the road, hmm. if you say this is the whole university student, that is not the reality significant number, this is actually 10 percent of the students actually. If you okay. calculate total uh, university student, this okay. is 10 percent. Hmm. They actually come in from the, especially from the arts, arts students. Hmm. But other faculties actually, they are doing very well. But as you said, there is, there is issue actually. Students must be provided the right education that can be applied for the industry and the uh, practical situation. Because the education system in Sri Lanka is, is a system where they, where they ask, uh, where they judge uh, the 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 talents of a fish by its ability to climb a tree. Yes, that which is, is, that which is, is that, yeah. Actually, this is not 
you should not given to this one of the government. Private sector must have a social responsibility. They have to given, they have to give us more opportunities for the graduate to be employed with their industries as a trainees. Now, example, I know there are several several companies. They are not taking Sri Lankan graduate. They are not taking Sri Lankan Lanka graduates. Lanka. And the reason for they this? are taking only foreign graduates. The reason for this? I don't know, but they 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 actually been given certain facilities by the government. Okay. And they have been given as a tax facilities or other facilities. They are there is a responsibility for those companies also to give a chance for our graduates to get the training. But on the other side also we have some problem with our education also. But these two barriers, especially the wall should be demolished and okay the industry must accept and provide more opportunities for our students to be, be, get more training at the same time our syllabuses must be developed Upgraded. to the, to the uh, demand driven hmm. and the industry driven educations of course doctor now this goes on to of course show the the interconnection the linkages that you spoke about uh, of the tourism industry where it interconnects all other industries like the tourism in uh, the the transport sector and the education yes, sector like yes. you pointed out right now uh, of course this is a massive discussion that cannot be concise to just 30 minutes unfortunately we have come to the end of the show and i believe we covered i i, a I, massive want, to, proportion. I want to give you one insight before concluding these discussions there will be a two challenges, especially three challenges we have to address. One is green, clean tourism. Second one is the physical developments are happening, right? Mm. We have to attract large number of tourists to Sri Lanka. Otherwise, room occupancy drop down, investors are suffering. Mm. Next one is what I am very directly related with human resource development. If we cannot develop the right human resources with right quality, with the right attitude, we will have the problem. Of course, so there you go. Uh, a few pointers on how to develop the tourism industry from none other than Dr. Suranga Silva. Thank you very much, Doctor, Thank for joining us for on our show, me, taking yes. time off your busy schedule. And that's it uh, from Biz First in Focus for today. Do join us again next week. Until then, take care and God bless. I'm Charlotte Benedict for the News First team. Thank you very much. Okay.